Hey man, you say man, it's your boy Hank in the brain, man. We back at it like a bad habit, man. Shout out to everybody who's tuning in, you feel me? Shout out to the new subscribers, man. I appreciate y'all. If you like the video, make sure to hit the like button, you feel me? Um, real quick, man, to be honest, man, I never really started to put my prison story out there, man. I was just going to keep it keep it to myself, man, um, and just chalk it up as a life lesson. But when I got out, you know, I started thinking, like, man, how can I turn this into a positive, man? Because... When I first got out, man, I was like, I was just so on cloud nine, and I was just so happy to get through my experience with me because I went through a lot of a lot of uh, emotional turmoil, a lot of physical turmoil, you know what I mean? And um, once I got out the joint, I was I was like, man, I'm so blessed to get through my experience, man. So when I put my content out, when it comes to my prison story, it's just for y'all to learn. For me, this is for educational purposes only. This is not to glorify prison life. Prison is trash. Jail is trash. Being a criminal is 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 no good, bro. Right? Um, I'm not a criminal, but it doesn't matter. To the state, I am a criminal. Why? Because I got into a car accident when I was drunk that, unfortunately, I injured somebody. You feel me? And she, to be honest, she almost, she could have died, and me too. So, therefore, I'm a criminal. I got an aggravated assault with a deadly weapon case. It is what it is, right? So, this is to learn, y'all. Learn from my mistakes. If you're out here moving and grooving, sticking and moving, be, be aware that there's consequences to your actions once you get caught. And notice I said once you get caught, because if you do it for long enough, you will get caught. All right, but boom. So, so I'm taking y'all back to intake, right? And I'm just going to tell you about my first few days of intake and when I first saw bloodshed, all right? All right, so boom. So like I said, everybody that I'm with in this cell is cool. You feel me? I got the, uh, to a certain extent, I got the, the OG chief to the right bottom. He in there for a DUI. You feel me? He just got to do like, like four months, you know, uh, Chicano up, upstairs from him. I'll call him M. You feel me? He in there for, he in there for a DUI as well. He got to do seven months. Now, this is like his fourth DUI. He was facing three and a half years in prison. Because it's fourth DUI. You hear me? But when you got lawyer money, you can make things move for you. So he got seven months in the joint, but he got three and a half years probation on top of that too, right? And then Brody on my, on, on my bottom, Billy Ray. He had got two, like two and a half years for some domestic violence shit, right? And the crazy thing is, is his girl called the police on him, right? Got him booked and locked up. And he got to go sit to do two and a half. And he's still with this bitch. Still stressing her letters. He writing her letters like every day, literally writing her letters every day. I'm like, that's why I called him a sip in the previous video because I'm like, bro. I'm like, wait, wait a second. You call a case because of this broad. She told the police she, you know, on, on you, you know what I'm saying? Which... That's her right. I'm not saying nothing bad about her, you know, telling the police that her man is beating her ass. But you still with this bitch, nigga? What the fuck? What part of the game is that? So, I'm like, all right, Billy Ray. And then he, man, I could actually do a whole video on on the simp mentality in prison because it, it's, actually, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm gonna, so, I'm going to save that from the video. But, uh, but nonetheless, cool, dude, he just a simp. And then, and then you got me, you doing too, you know, for the episode, right? So we just chopping it up, you know what I mean, for the first couple of days. I remember I woke up day two for chow, because they serve morning chow like 6 in the morning, 5.30, 6 in the morning. But it's just a, a, a breakfast set, so it's, I want to say it's, it's eight pieces of bread, peanut butter and jelly, one bologna, a cookie, uh, a bag of chips, and then depending on the day, it's either an egg and cereal and milk or a Rice Krispie treat with cereal or something, something like that, right? This was like two years ago, so I can't remember, right? Um, so we get the set, and I'm smashing the set again. I'm like, Shh. like I told y'all last video, once I got my first set, I'm like, oh, I can get used to these set after not eating in the county for 14 days. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so yeah, so we eat the set, and then... Uh, and yeah, we basically just chopping it up. Basically, just to sum it all up, we basically chopping up for like two, three days straight. 
You feel me? From everything you could think of. Sports, women, uh, our cases, you know, what you do for a what we're doing for a living, you know, they all in construction, and I'm telling them about what I'm doing. So, you know, you're gonna chop it up with your cellies, man, you know what I mean? Because reception is basically the whole. You know what I'm saying? Because you only go out for a wreck once every three days for 45 minutes in the morning, and that's it. You feel me? And you only shower once every three days, okay? Once every three days that we took a shower in intake, right? And when you go to the shower, you in there with your whole cell. You feel me? It's just, it's ugly. I'll talk about it in the next video, but, um, but yeah, so I wasn't going to wreck because it was hella cold outside. You feel me? And you in there in, in shower shoes. So you don't have no shoes at all at this point. You're just strictly in shower shoes. I'm not going outside working on my shower shoes and it's like 40 degrees outside. I'm not doing it. But when my cellies would go to wreck, um, and you can write your people too though. So you can go to wreck and get a piece of paper and, and an envelope and write your family and they'll send it off to you too. So you can do that wreck too. But me, when I, when I went down, my mindset was, I, I don't want to talk to my family. I don't want to talk to no bitches. I don't want to talk to no pot. I don't want to talk to nobody. You that was my mindset, right? So I didn't need to go out because I, I don't need to talk to my people. Uh, I, my last jail call was, hey, they're going to roll me up at any, any, any day. I don't know what day, but I'm going to hit out Hamburg. And I don't know how long I'll be out in Hamburg. But after that, I'm going to hit my yard. Like That was my, my, my last message to my people. So I, I was good. So they would go to wreck and... When they would go to wreck, I would get up and just work out the cell of my boxers. Like, that was my alone time. You know what I mean? So I work out in the cell of my boxers. I was doing 200 push-ups a day, and I was just doing shadow boxing. You feel? I was just shadow boxing and shit in there by myself. And, um, yeah, so that, that's just, you know, my first day. It was cool, man. Uh, I remember that first night, the second day, that, but basically my first full night there, they served meatloaf for chow at night. Man, I smashed that meatloaf. I was like, hell yeah. I'm like, this is what I'm talking about. You feel me? I'm like, yeah, I can get used. See, you see how my mind is working? It's adaptation, y'all. It's adaptation. That meatloaf in real life was nasty as fuck. With that boosty ass rice and uh, I think it was broccoli stems and some gravy and a piece of bread and the dessert, which was like a cookie or a, or a, a, a little cake or whatever, right? But I'm like smashing it like it's a full course, you know, a meal, right? <sighs> yeah, humbling, man. But uh, but it was good that first night. All right, boom. So the bloodshed, right? First bloodshed I seen. So this might have been maybe day three or day four, right? So it was like in the afternoon time. And we just chopping it up. Me and my son is chopping it up. And all of a sudden you hear, doom, doom, doom. Against the door, right? And if you've been locked up before, if you ever been in the hole or been, ever been in the joint, or you feel me, anywhere, you know that sound. You know that sound of somebody kicking on that door. You feel me? And you know, kicking my, kicking my damn uh, wall. You know what that means, right? You know what that sound means, right? So we hear the do, do, do. We get up, we're like, didn't y'all hear that? So we all get up, we go to the window. It's like a small window, though. You, you, and you really can't see too far. You can only see maybe, maybe about eight feet to the right and left, maybe something like that. I don't know. It kind of depends on where your where your cell is at as well. But uh, so yeah, you hear doom, 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 and we're like, damn. So we hear the banging, and then maybe about maybe about like maybe about five. Man, it was less than five minutes. Maybe three to four minutes passed by, and then you see two COs walk past. So I see two CLs walk past to the right, and I'm like, okay. And then I see a white boy coming out with the two CLs walking to the left. And the white boy, he looking, he looking sad, and he walking with his head down, and the, it was the left side of his face that I see, right? Man, his nose all leaking, blood on his on his jumpsuit, you know what I mean? His eyes all purple, looking black and shit. I mean, he in bad shape, right? So, so we like, when he walked past, we're like, oh, damn, man. Like, 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 remember on Friday when Debo knocked out that man, that nigga uppercut, he flew in the air, and then everybody's like, oh, damn, god damn. Like, that, that's what it was like in the cell, right? So, so he walked out, he leaking, and they sit him down in the common area on the little chair on the bench where the table is at, right? And I don't know why Al 
longer has those tables out there because it's you on lockdown. You can't even go outside, so them tables there don't even serve a purpose. I, I don't even know why, why they're there. Maybe I guess under normal circumstances, maybe they no, nah, no, nah, there ain't no they, it's all locked doors over there. So I don't know why they why they have those tables in there. But so they sit they sit them down, they call a nurse over, they like wiping them off and shit. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, like, why they why did Lady Brad just sit out here in front of the open so everybody can see what's going on? You know what I mean? Like, they did this dude dirty by doing that, man, right? Because he was like the laughing stock of the pile, like everybody seeing this shit, right? And you hear people, and he talking to the police. So he talking to the police, they walking around, he talking to the police and shit, right? And you just hear people yelling through the holes, like there's, on the cell door, you know, the, the, there's hella holes on, on, the, um, on the bottom half, right? So you just hear people yell through the holes like, oh, I hate you, bitch, you got your ass beat. Stop talking to police, go through with the vote. You fucking rat, woo woo, and just talk, people talking crazy, right? People talking wet. I'm like, man, this is all bad, right? So they talking to them, the police talking to them, and they escort them over to the left, which I'm, I'm assuming at this point they, they take them to, to the medical. If, if you was ever in Alhambra and, and Depot, you know what medical is, and you know what I'm talking about. And then they go back to the, to, to the right, right? And then maybe about three to four minutes later, they bring all that pot out, right? Man, I'm bumping everything. Shout out to my Pharaoh, you feel me? But um, so they bring everybody to to uh, to the um, to, to the left side, right? And and they and they line them up and they 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 sit them on first. They sit them like this on the ground, and they all lined up like this on the ground, right? And we and we looking like like we looking at this. We looking. We're like through through the window. We like hey, what happened? Woo -woo. And they just laughing. And then I see X. I see X come. So I'm like, okay, man, if, you, if you've been tuning my story, you remember I, I, when I introduced you to X, right? We was in this, when we was in the, uh, in the holding cell, in the, uh, the cage when we first got to uh, intake. So I'm like, okay, I'm like, Brody, I'm like, I'm like, Brody over there in the cell, man, getting down over there. You know what I mean? And uh, so the police, so basically, he got whooped in the cell, right? And when that happens, if somebody checks in, which the white boy he checked in, he ended up PCing up and shit. When there's a fight, they're gonna bring everybody out, they make everybody take their shirt off, they, br they bring a video camera, they record everybody's body, they record all your knuckles, because they wanna make they wanna see if you got any uh any body marks on you, you know what I mean? Or if your if your knuckles are scarred up or you got bloody knuckles, they they're gonna assume that you don't want that punched on, bro. You know what I mean? Now, um, yeah, so they're doing that, and I just remember, I just remember distinctly seeing this this Mexican dude. When I'm looking out the window and all this, the Mexican dude in front of me, he had his hood tattooed on his head. You know what I'm saying? And um, come to find out, that's Rhino. You feel me? And I'm gonna talk about Rhino in the future video, but cool ass Serenio. You feel me? From California and all that shit, man. I ain't gonna say his hood. I'm gonna try to keep it. I'm gonna try to try to uh, keep it ambiguous as I can, you know what I mean? But the reality is, in the joint, there's a ton of rhinos, so nobody, you know what I mean? So that's not really a big deal. But that's rhino. And then, you know, I'm looking, and I see this short, fat, like, couldn't find out he 310, he maybe like 5'8, 310, Simone cat, long hair. I'm looking at him, and that's J4. You know what I mean? And again, I'm going to talk, talk about j in a future video, but come to find out later on, because we ended up having to get moved into their cell. <laughs> Remember the motherfuckers who beat their ass? We had to move into their cell. Come to find out j wanted to put them paws on, right? But, uh, yeah, man, so, you know what I mean? So they, they, they do the video recording and all that, and then, um, and then they basically send them back to the cell, though, but Dude ended up PCing up, man, and um, guys, I'm gonna leave you. I'm gonna leave y'all with this, man. If you gotta, if you gotta fight, you get into a fight in the joint or in jail, whatever the case is, man. Just win, lose, or draw. Just take it for what it is. Don't talk to the police, bro. Don't talk to the police. Don't tell who 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 who, who beat you up if you got beat up. Don't do it. All it's gonna do is make your bid a lot harder, much more tougher than it is. And if you just take your ass up like a man, you'd be surprised at the respect you get. You know what I mean? Because this dude, from him talking to police like that, they ended, what, what ended up happening
happened was they ended up putting this dude in his own cell in the middle of D-165, where I was at, or what's it for, whatever it was, in, the, in D-170. They put him in the middle of us in his own cell by himself. So every time he come out for count or showers, man, they was just roasting his ass. Walking to his door, knocking on the door, ah, hey, what's up, Stitch? How's your day going? Hey, what's up, rat? What's the wall? Just talking crazy. You feel me talking wet? So I'm like, just save yourself. Save yourself that, bro. If you get if you get whooped on in jail, punched on in prison, it's okay, man. Just suck it up. Chances are, chances are the situation wasn't avoidable. You feel me? So it's all good. It happened, man. But hey, I'm going to leave it right there. It's your boy Ink in the Brain. If y'all like the video, make sure you hit the like button on the video. And uh, I'm going to touch on my, my experiences moving to that, that cell <laughs> with them. And the, the craziness starts to uh, starts to exacerbate. You know what I mean? If you know what I'm saying. But hey, y'all be smooth, man. I'll see you on the next one. Y'all be solid.